Hi everyone, Dorota Palitska, international nail artist and educator here. And today we are going to do a set of the nails with lots of blink on it. Have a preview of it in here. Yes, blink, this is what I love the most, the look of it. Uh, and you can create absolutely uh, amazing uh, designs using only crystals as well. And I will show you that today. So let's start. So pretty, I love them actually uh, so much. So I will show you step by step exactly how to create this uh, beautiful stunning set. Uh, I had those French nails for ages and now is the time to say goodbye to them. Uh, obviously I've got some flowers to take off one. Watch your eyes guys, always when you're kind of clipping off the gems, watch your eyes. Cameraman, watch your eyes. <laughs> No, he have been behaving today, so I'm not going to shoot him. <laughs> he have been a good boy today. Oh gosh, Dorota, hurry up with it. There we are, one and the last one. I'm obviously using like an old clippers, so uh, that's the flowers off. And then we are going to file this uh, French away. I also, I really loved this French like so, so much, but it's time to say goodbye. I've got the fan on and then I'm collecting everything into my hand. <laughs> okay, I can put the e-file on a higher speed because I'm working with my right hand, so I am a little bit faster. Once I have done that, I can blend a little bit uh, the old product. I'm working on the gel. I'm not working on my natural nail, only on the gel. And then touch up this corner. Okay, the biggest mess done. So we are going to push back the cuticles and do the cuticles next. So push them back and you can see it like how much my nails have grown, lots. Cuticle bead. And I'm going to clean one side. This nail is always so satisfying because I've got overgrown cuticle here, like really overgrown cuticle there. Reverse and do the other side. Okay, the biggest mess done, so I'm going to get away this fun just so I can, guys, kind of be in camera. <laughs> baby wipe in here so I can quickly clean the mess and then we need to shape those nails so I'm going to file it one side other side I 
and same on this one. Shorten it a little bit. Don't shorten it to the maximum length before you put the product on. Um, I usually do that once I've got the entire product on. Check the client view and then we need to um, remove a little bit of bulk from the free edge. Always when you shorten the needles you need to remove some product from this place. Otherwise it will become too heavy. Then give it a couple scratches to the natural needle. I quite like to use the corner of the file because I can get everywhere. Clean the dust, remove the cuticles, do the final inspections. So I'm just uh, cleaning those, uh, those dust. And using the cuticle nippers, we are going to clean the rest of the cuticle. Do the same on the other one. So I'm starting first of all with uh, any bits and pieces of the cuticle which I've got left on the needle plate, needle plate and that's the actual cuticle. Look how much stuff is there. And then the new fold. So here you have to be careful when you're trimming these parts. You don't want to do it too much. Okay, and I'm going to leave it at this stage because when we file, we kind of exfoliate cuticles as well. Um, so I tend to never clean them like 100% until I finish the filing uh, because they might be just gone with the new file. Okay, doing the final check, so any wee shiny places, like I've got shiny place there, it's hardly visible, but it is there, you don't want that on your news. Those prep is really, really important, like that will prevent any kind of lifting uh, on your news and make them last a long time. Clean it with the blue scrap. So blue scrap is going to dehydrate the nail plate, remove any oils from it. Also clean the um, dust as well. An extra nail prep. Wait for it to dry and then the universal air bond to get a nice adhesion of the product to the natural nails. So when my uh, nail prep is drying, I'm already opening the pot. I'm going to use the um, perfect rose. I'm making my life more difficult because uh, Underneath of those Aurora, we've got um, Baby Boomer and uh, for Baby Boomer, milky pink, uh, like a very light, light uh, milky color is the nicest one. Uh, so I would recommend that you use Gaz Dad. Um, since I have used this uh, color before, I'm just going to fill them with the same color. Uh, so this color is better for a French manicure, not for a Baby Boomer, but I just like to make my life complicated sometimes. So I'm applying a thin layer on both of the nails straight away. So if I'm doing like all the hand, I would just do it on all five nails, like a very thin layer uh, on the entire set of the nail and then cure it 60 seconds. Okay, once it's cured, pick up another scoop of the product and now we are going to build up the apex, I mean build up, move the apex. So I'm applying a nice and thin layer on the entire nail again. And those two thin layers is just enough product uh, exactly where the uh, product meets with the um, cuticle. Then small scoop 
so we can move the apex a little bit and I'm starting quite close to the cuticle don't go too much to the sides sorry I'm going to twist into your way guys more and then work one side other side that's the apex area don't press it harder to remove any excess from the free edge because you don't want extra product in there and uh, you can see it we have filled it we have moved the apex is maybe a little bit too high there we are uh, on those new cook it uh, i'm going to just freeze it like two three five seconds don't freeze two three seconds because then it's not uh, it can kind of explode <laughs> uh, so five seconds we need to freeze it actually at least and then uh, i can do it on another nail and do the full cure before we can start filing because we have prepared those nails when we was removing the the old product and when we was preparing them for a fill uh, we have kind of shaped them a little bit as well there is not going to be as much shaping into the, that nails because we have kind of kept everything in shape and that's what we are doing now as well removing those excess of the product look how strongly i'm pressing in there uh, we are kind of giving ourselves less job um, with the filing you can sometimes like if you're too fast you can wait a little couple seconds for the gel to spread a little bit before you cure it uh, if you're too slow you need to just hurry up because otherwise you will float cuticles and everything uh, so i'm going just to cure them exactly 60 seconds clean this ma uh, this uh, um, brushes away so they don't get dust like and when i'm cleaning my brush what i'm doing is i'm just uh, removing excess of the product shaping it into the nice point and then just close the lid and that's my brush uh, ready um, and before i pick it up i would just clean it off the rest of the gel which is on it okay that's how i store my brush okay that's them cooked so remove the inhibition layer with the uv cleanser <laughs> and then let's shape them i mean they do really not look too terribly bad bad so uh, take a file and just the same like we was doing before we are going to file one side look like the line needs to be straight um, it's quite hard always for me to achieve that on this hand especially when I'm doing a fill and you can see it the edges are a little bit rounded off I do not like that um, so support the file like don't file this way because you get those rounded shape you want to have it nice and straight okay do not do it like this you you really need to think how you're filing so straight and straight okay then same in here straight and straight then shorten the free edge and lift everything up so when we have uh, filed that we've got um, again thicker this place we need to bring that higher up so going that direction okay do the same on the other side so this way i have removed uh, also an extra bulk from the free edge and you can see they're already slimmer I have to blend everything around the cuticle area we always have to do that uh, so that's my next step and guys for those of you who are watching me for a longer period of the time you probably have noticed this is kind of my filing technique and that's a filing technique which i'm using um, constantly uh, this way you can be more consistent uh, your nails can look more same um, and i would suggest you do one step at the time on through entire set of the nails okay so if you're doing um, um, the cuticle like this part you would do it on all the nails so on the client i would work like up on the cuticle and then down the way okay that's how i'm cleaning this area so up and then down so i want to clean it as well yes i i do explain it at like so long uh, and you can see it where we have filed i didn't touch it those places yet and the reason for it is if you start filing like whatever all over the place then you will just go messy so we concentrating on one bit at the time okay um i'm going to now file my free edge to the to the point i need it and now it's um now is a time where I can just get the, the right length uh, of the nails 
Um, I'm always saving myself some kind of room for improvement, uh, so I don't want to do this part uh, before I uh, start filing them. I can see it is all screened. And you know why, guys? Because I'm not sitting straight, like I'm terribly sitting like behind uh, the place where we record. I've got just like lamps and everything over me. Okay, that's better. So once everything is shortened, you can see the free edge is really thick. Like a really thick, we don't want that. It will look disgusting. Like I can, no, I'm not. Uh, yes, I'm going to show you guys actually. <laughs> That's a wrong color pick, but there we are. Now we can see it even more. Like it's huge, like huge amount of the product. The, the free edge should be the thickness of the credit card. Uh, so compared to the new Yes, yeah, so you can, oh, it's not finished because I don't like the look of the pigment at the end. So there we are. So I have just filed it. You can see, uh, can you? Yeah. Yeah, you can see it, uh, the difference uh, of it, okay? But when we thin out those free edge, we also don't want to remove any product from the apex. So this is my apex area, those shiny place. And I'm not going to file those shiny place. I'm going to actually file the place where I've got those gel polish. So up to, I cannot file even as high. I'm going to show you. I'm just going to kind of file, ah, oh, Dorota, 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 what you're doing? There we are. I'm going to file up to that point. And the reason for it is, if I would start um, filing too high up in here, uh, this is where my natural needle joins with extensions. You don't want to thin up this place. You need this place to be really strong, ideally, you kind of want to do it almost reverse French. So this part, the, the, the one I have just painted with the gel polish, we need to thin out. And this place, we need to keep it at end. Um, I might be even more terrible and do it, <laughs> and do it even more detailed explanation um, for the reasons for it is, imagine, Imagine this is your nail, but I, I think I have showed it like maybe a year or two years ago because times fly. So imagine this is your nail bed. This is your um, extension and uh, this is our a, uh, the place where the product needs to be thick. So if my free edge, if my free edge, there we are, that will be my free edge. So this is free edge, the one I have told you I need to buff. If this is heavy, look what is happening. <laughs> Can you see it, what is happening? <laughs> it can't even stand properly. Um, so when the nail will grow, it will just, it will just kind of lift from the cuticle area, um, and it will, it will also be out of the balance. Okay, we don't want the free edge to be thick. What we want, we want your apex, which keeps everything in place, and then we want the free edge to be nice and thin. So when the nails grow, everything is still in place. Those kind of apex also helps to secure your product. You have seen those nails; they have been a month on. I had to shorten them a little bit, the, the, the French ones, because we was uh, going on a motorbike, like almost 200 kilometers, guys. I have done the exercise of my inner tights for the next three months. <laughs> oh gosh, but it was really nice, really beautiful views. Um, but yeah, anyway, so that's why uh, I'm not going to file too much in this place. Uh, I'm going to concentrate on that and thin out those free edge. <laughs> And uh, they do really look nice and thin uh, once a day done. Um, and I really love it, but also they are strong and du durable because I've got all my heavy product there, uh, like I have showed you on the demonstration. Okay, um, when I'm filing those, thinning up those free edge, I do really look into how my C curve, so the, the hairline um, looks. And you have to remember, you cannot file it just on the top. The nail goes in a curve, so you have to do it, have the contact with your nail here, 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 and there, okay? Um, so this way you will get a really nice result. Okay, I'm quite happy with it. Uh, that's enough because we still need to have to buff it. And as you can see it, I still got shiny place, which I didn't touch it. I don't need to. I don't need to file this place. We have uh, put all this product there because we wanted it to be, uh, the strongest place, so what a point to filing it away. Okay. This is called fussiness now. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to go like this. 
because it's easier for me to see from that point of view. Perfect. And then the same in here, and that's them done. Uh, I'm going to use the buffer just to smooth all the surface because obviously we cannot use the shiny places for the next product to stick to it. Uh, it needs to be nice and rough. So I'm going to grab the buffer and just buff entire nails and then we can move on finally to the next, uh, next step. So I will quickly just buff that. And you can see it. Uh, obviously, this buffer creates scratches, uh, so it is perfectly fine to use it. Uh, the gel is going to stick to that. I'm also buffing around the cuticle area as well, like making sure there is no dust particles um, and other bits and pieces. Do the same in here. Okay, then clean it and we can move on into the next step. Blue scrap to dehydrate it. And then we can do the baby boomer. So I'm going to do the baby boomer quite high up because the next step, like we want to do the Aurora and I wanted it to be um, multicolor <laughs> because uh, on different color, it will look um, different, okay? Um, sponge is cut and I'm going to, look how much fluff is there. Uh, you can get a really uneven surface if you do not remove that fluff. So always a, either a tiny bit of the cellar tape or the um, nail form to keep removing those uh, excess. And then I'm start rubbing this in. So pull those nail folds down. This part of the sponge is clean and you can touch your skin with the clean part of the sponge, uh, but you cannot touch it with the parts where you've got the product, okay? So at the edges, I'm always kind of making sure I'm touching my nail folds only with those um, um, clean parts of the sponge. And as I said, because this, col uh, this gel is quite pigmented compared to the milky pink. Uh, so basically the milky pink will be just a color which I'm creating at the cuticle area right now. Um, so there wouldn't be almost any blending, like very easy to do the baby more with this one is much more difficult. Uh, but since I had it, I just decide to go for it. Okay, make sure you remove those fluffs, clean your sponge. There was another fluff in there. Uh, another thing when you're doing the baby boomer, guys, um, if you do, I'm going to cook it and talk. When you're doing a baby boomer and uh, you don't have enough product control, like playing too much with the gel, you will create air bubbles. When we file those air bubbles, we file away and then we've got a whole pit hole and the dust gets stuck in this hole. Even if you clean it and the hole is kind of not visible, I actually have one hole in there. I'm going to show you that. Um, so the holes can be different sizes and you can sometimes have lots of holes um, if you created lots of bubbles. If it does happen to you, there is a tip to fix it. Uh, I'm not able to show it to you because it's too late now with my nail, but I'm not bothered because they are going to be crystals anyway. But if you have lots of bubbles, put a drop of the base gel all over your nail or a top coat, cure it and then buff it. So this way you wouldn't have those uh, air pockets uh, and holes where the product is going to get stuck. I'm not sure if the camera, but camera always enlarge any imperfections. So. Can you see this white dot there? Yes. Yes, you can. Okay. So that's probably... Yes, it is. Um, it could be either a scratch from the file or it could be some sort of air bubble where my product got stuck. Okay. With the baby boomer, it doesn't look nice if we've got lots of those kind of uh, bubbles. <laughs> Next thing. I'm applying quite a high, uh, lots of product and because I, I want the end to be very, very white, uh, just so my Aurora is going to shine through blues and pinks and all sorts of colors. Um, and then the next one, so first one I was rubbing in like this. Next one, I'm just tapping gently. So tap, 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 that's it. And if it would be, believe me guys, if it would be the milky pink, that's probably would give you a really nice, uh, nice ombre. With the color I have choose, I have to probably do uh, more, more coats, many more coats. <laughs> Let's cook it. Okay, that's it almost cooked. And I'm going to um, 
take the sponge actually and the product which I've got left over on the sponge there is actually quite a lot of product what I'm like to do it at the end is just like go over it and give it an extra blend and you can see it how much nicer the things becomes after doing those blend I, I have really bring it higher like very extremely high up like I wouldn't even call it maybe baby boomer because it's almost like a full full coverage it's almost like a faded um faded one but I do prefer it um, that over the gel polish application and you can also still see the difference in a color um, that there is a different color here and different color there and I quite like that uh, with the Aurora pigment. Okay we are going to quickly just um, cure that and then put the top coat so <clears throat> also all the products I have used in this video we stock them up on our website which is uh, dorotapalitska.com. High shine no wipe top gel and then Aurora pigment. Um, I love this Aurora pigment like I'm totally addicted to it uh, I, I have been addicted to it for ages like so so long time um, and I'm so happy to have it uh, it on my nails again because it always looks fantastic um, so if another thing is like guys I'm do really listening to you like what you're asking me for so as well so like this video is just packed with all the hints and tips if it would happen that you get like a wee fluff uh, I actually have one in here Oh, actually, I've got lots now. <laughs> one, she says, one fluff. Mm, okay, here I would say, what you can do it is you can, there we are with the cuticle nipper, uh, cuticle pusher, I have just scraped it away. Sometimes it happens that when you scrape it away, you will scrape away a tiny bit of the product as well. So if you do, just touch it up with a sponge and that's it. Like that's how I clean it for my clients as well. If I get like a really uh, large particle of the sponge stocked um, or something. But those tip with the form or the uh, cellar tape is really helpful. I'm applying the top coat and I should be fussy as much as possible. Like I should be like crazy fussy. For Aurora pigments, the nails needs to be perfect. If they are not perfect, they are going to look ugly. Like... Um, and any kind of chrome guys um, they just really needs to be spot on so I'm applying the stop coat and as you could see it this is my cap free edge time <laughs> and see what's happened there I've got some dust particles like lots of dust particles or some hair or something if I do not remove that it will be so visible. Oh, come on. I'm not going to cut this video. No. Okay, you can see there is a one dust particle and one dust particle in here. So what I'm doing is I'm putting a little bit more top coat over it to kind of smooth that out. That's better. If you don't, it will be visible. And here the top coat doesn't go nice, so I need to just touch it up. Okay, I would say I'm kind of happy. I can cure it. 60 seconds cure, and then we can apply the, uh, the chrome powder. Okay, so my nail is almost cooked. And look at those beautiful crystals. They are awesome, guys. Like, I'm going to use them. And we've got them in stock. The stock is unfortunately low, but they are so different to the AB. It's like almost like a moon crystals. I love them so much. Uh, we are going to use them. Uh, so Aurora pigment in. Like, touch it first. Like this. Touch it like this. And now look into the difference like into uh, the wrapped in one and not wrapped in one so you have to make sure you really get those mirror rook by rubbing it on and I prefer the finger application uh, as much I don't know as much nicer uh, if you would apply your chrome over sticky top coat or sticky gel polish that's kind of look you will get if you apply it on the no wipe top gel you get those kind of mirrory look but even when you want to have those mirrory look if you would leave those dust particles over it and apply it with your top coat it will kind of go grainy so make sure you do really remove that uh, as well keep rubbing it in and that's so nice even on its own i love it i love it okay i'm just going to 
play with them. Check, inspection. Okay, I'm happy. <laughs> Close the Aurora pigment, so we are not going to make a mess. And then on the back of the form, so I had some form which I have used, I'm going to put the base gel. And that's how I have secured those previous flowers. That's how I always secure those crystals. And guys, they stay on unbelievably. And I'm talking about the crystals which don't split, you know, because sometimes you get the crystal which splits from the top. I have cleaned the excess of the pigment uh, because I don't want to to go grainy and then we are going to put uh, so here I've got the original Swarovski crystals they are extremely hard to get at the moment guys like is unbelievable so unfortunately uh, I have got them like ages ago uh, and I'm just going to use it on this needle we are going to go exactly the same like on the ring finger uh, so a large crystal I'm going to use my uh, gem picker a large crystal there and then two smaller ones but before I place them in I'm going to grab some caviar beads and we've got new caviar beads as well guys Um, I don't I use them and I don't use them <laughs> I love those tiny ones uh, so we've got um, those uh, tiny ones um, I'm going to use them in a silver color from the previous lot we had it and they are so small like they much much smaller as you can see it compared to them uh, they are much 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 smaller sorry camera man I'm going to be all over the place so that's those tiny <laughs> as usual eh? as usual and then that's the smallest ones and then the large ones I mean you can really see the difference in the sizes but depending what you like Na, na, na. There we are. Depends on the design. And depends on the design, depends how the cameraman have been behaving. Uh, you either pick up the largest size to finish your design quicker or the smallest ones. <laughs> anyway, uh, we've got this one. So before I place another crystals on, I'm going to pick up those uh, tiny ones from the pot, not from the pot, from the case, and just place them in those corners. There we are. And now I can pick up those pearls. I actually love those pearls. Like I am addicted to them. They are amazing. And then move them up. Okay, so this is my first part of the construction. <laughs> Crystal construction. I'm going to freeze it. Even at two seconds freeze will keep them kind of in place uh, so do that then we are going to put a pearl in here why are you laughing cameraman i know i did say before yes okay okay cameraman is laughing because i have said before when we was doing what we was freezing we was freezing gel huh okay so camera we will <laughs> We was freezing gel and I have said in the beginning of this video that we have to cure it for minimum five seconds, otherwise the gel might kind of expose. With the base gel is different, I can cure just two seconds because I want to just hold this crystal and it will catch the base because the base is clear. Same with the top coat, I think it's easier, but anything which has... It's less product as well. Yes, less product as well, but no, it's mainly the more pigment you've got on, the slower the product cures. So that's the main reason. But that's a good question, cameraman. And you have been listening to what I'm saying. Always. Always. Yeah. I get to know. Okay. So I'm not bothered how I'm placing them first. Um, I just really need to get them into the needle. Now, because we've got the Aurora pigment, which isn't... Um, protected you have to be quite gentle you don't want to move it uh, too strongly the crystals because you could scratch away your home so keep keep that in mind okay so this two crystals on the one side two on the other side check if they straight and then check again if they straight are they straight no Okay, they are not too bad. Stop it, Dorota. 
because they're never going to be perfect. Cook it, cook it. Okay, next one, again, pick up the drop of the base. And what we've got, we've got caviar beads, small caviar beads. Okay, so on this one, we are going to place some crystals and then here, some large caviar beads. So it will look kind of like a ring. I've got one. I always prefer put the crystals on because then what I can do is I can kind of almost slide my brush against the crystal um, and those caviar beads and those extra bases also secure my crystals even more. Uh, usually if you place a single crystal, it's more likely to come off compared to the crystal construction. <laughs> Uh, and then, yeah, because it's not catchy, it's nice and smooth and uh, uh, and that's all the idea about it, you know, like I need to wash my hair, I need to do the gardening, I need to, I don't know, put my clothes on and I don't want to catch um, when I'm wearing those crystals and you guys know I do wear crystals and the things quite a lot, uh, so I like to have it nice and smooth and that's what we are doing with the caviar beads, is we are giving it a smooth transition. Okay, pick up the base gel again. And then here at the side, I'm just going to place those tiny wee caviar beads. So those ones. Uh, I've got two touching the crystal and then some line out of it. Just so it's kind of finished off. I didn't want to place the um, gem in there because it will make the nail look really thick. So if you're kind of doing those um, crystal application on the side, not on the side, in the middle kind of on the nail, don't put too many crystal on the side because it will look really bulky. You want to put those crystals only in a kind of middle and then finish it off with something which is smaller. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, that doesn't look bulky. And then caviar beads around it. I think it's kind of gives those, um, those caviar beads gives it those luxury finish to it. I don't know, posh look. <laughs> I love them. And even if you don't have a patient to do them, I think they are worth to do. Obviously, like once I clean uh, those nails from all the dust, uh, they will look nice and pretty. Now we are going to place another caviar beads in here. So in between each of those crystal, we caviar bead. Like make sure you do not uh, put too much base into your pot. That's why I quite, I quite like to use those uh, back of the form. Uh, and then we've got another. I can straight away do those ones. So two, two crystals. Are they the smallest one? I'm actually going to. Oh. <laughs> I'm actually going to show you guys the difference in the color of the crystals as well. So that is the AB, so that's the usual AB, like, you know, those multicolor ones, and that's the moon ones, so they are, no, oh, she takes them away, so there we are, you can see both of them. Uh, those moon ones are like the more of a yellow and blue, and then AB is like pink, blue, green, yellow, all sort of colors, and these ones are... Visible just the green, the camera. No, I think A, B is A, B. Yeah, but I don't... Yeah, you don't... You have seen the green. Yeah, we see just the green. Oh, ah, now okay. it's visible better. Ah, okay. Is it? Yeah, so we've got pink, yeah. purples, like all sorts of colors. While on this ones, you've got more of a blue hint to it. And I quite like yeah, it. Visible. Was it visible now? Oh, yes. Yay! Sorry, cameraman. Yes, I know, I am all over the place. You've got hard job with me, often. <laughs> okay, I have just made a mess of my gem picker. So I need to clean it. And then what else we've got in here? Okay, we've got some caviar beads. So we've got the small ones. 
And when you're doing the construction, I, I quite often don't know how the construction is going to look until I start placing those first crystals, because then you know when the next one should go, if that makes sense, uh, without of uh, placing those first crystal. I, I don't know, like, how they go. <laughs> Okay, caviar bits in there. Then larger ones. So that's the larger ones. Two of it. And then the crystal. I should do it separately. Look what is happening with my caviar bits. I've got quite a lot of base gel and then they are, they are just sliding away from me. Uh, my mistake. But usually... When I'm recording, I also don't want to waste too much of your time. There we are. Check it if it's straight. I'm happy with that. Let's cook it. And then we can apply the top coat and those beautiful set is finished. I love them. <laughs> I love them. They are on my nails. I'm happy. I'm going to play with them all day. Like this. And like this checking all the angles but you can see this ombre can you see this cameraman that's there is different colors yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes i'm getting overexcited sometimes okay if you struggle take a small brush and do it with the small brush i'm just going to use the ooh, i'm just going to use the large brush go around it i should scratch the free edge i didn't do it my fault. On the clients, I would always file the free edge so the chrome doesn't come off. On manuals, I will just do it after <laughs> I apply the top coat. You could also apply um, nail primer as well. Look what I'm also doing with the brush. I'm really going against those crystals, especially the, mm, the large one which I had uh, in the index finger here. Look how my brush squeezed in underneath of that crystal. Um, so that also gives an extra, um, extra security to it. Extra attention. Okay, check how they look. I don't like this place. There we are. That's better. That's okay. Let's annoy cameraman. <laughs> no, okay. I'm finishing. I'm finishing. I'm finishing. I'm finishing. Okay, I'm just going to cook them and then I show you the final results. Yeah, so one day cooking, uh, I'm just going to prepare my wipe, some cuticle oil. Actually, I need to get a new one as well, cameraman, please. <laughs> I need to do all the list of the stuff I needed. Um, anyway, guys, I would like to say a huge thank you as well for all of you who are supporting us uh, through the um, website, like buying our stuff as well. Like, I'm, we really appreciate it. Uh, so thank you, thank you so much uh, uh, for that. Uh, that means a lot uh, to us. Cameraman is always happy when he goes in the morning and he can uh, prepare those orders uh, for you. Uh, but anyway, I'm just rubbing those cuticle oil in and I can show you those uh, pretty pretty set of the nails and uh, this hand is much nicer i like them i really like them i hope you like them too i'm sending you glittery hugs and bye for now